Okay, with this one, what we're going to do is we are actually going to show you how to create a test. So we're going to go to uh, My Tests, click on My Tests, and then we're going to go to Create New Tests. Now, we give the test a name, and here's my name for it is Example Test. And then we just click Add New Test. Now, our test has been created, and it looks like, well, there's not much I can do here, but we got to click on this, the View Options, and it'll basically give us a box down. And what we can do is we basically want to add questions to this test. Now, what's nice about it is every time you add a question to a test, it puts it into a test bank for you. So you can pull those questions up and you don't have to retype those questions. Or if you want, you can create a test and say, hey, I want 50 questions, but I want them out of these 100 uh, questions possible. So it will randomly pull 50 questions out of 100, and each kid can get 50 very different questions out of that 100. But for this, I'm just going to make it simple, and we'll just add a, a new question directly onto this test. So I'm going to add a new question, like I'm creating a brand new test for the very first time. Uh, now I get my choice of what kind of question I want. Do I want a multiple choice? Do I want multiple response, which means I could have more than one correct answer? Uh, true or false? Um, they call it free text. It basically means uh, fill in the blank. I can do a punctuation, but that sounds really boring. Uh, or I can do an essay. Okay, so let's make an essay question to start out. So I'll just make up an essay question. Doesn't that sound exciting? And what we do here is we basically can set it for how many points I want it to be. So I got my question. The kids will see this question, and there'll be a blank behind below it where they can type in their own, their own uh, response or their answer. And I tell it I want it out of five points. Now, just add it to the test. Okay. Now, when I go to grade that, it'll show me their response to my question, and it'll have a drop-down box one through zero to five, and I can assess them how many points they receive on that exam, or I'm sorry, on that essay question right off there. If we do a free text, um, and then what we can do is we give them the question. And we can basically put in what would be acceptable answers here. So we could say, well, we'll, we'll, we'll take it if it's, they say, a B, even though technically it's a WASP. And at this point, you're trying to guess what possible answers, correct answers, the students might come up with. Okay? And we basically have a number of options there. And if they type in one of these things, they'll get it correct. If they type in something other than what's on here, it'll be marked wrong. Now, if it's marked wrong, but it's because they spelt it so poorly, for example, they put in that it was a, they spelled wasp wrong. Then what will happen is I can override that if I'd like. So and I and I'll do that. So and how many points is it worth? And we'll just say it's worth one in this case. Let's see. Uh, a true or false is pretty much straight up. And then I tell it whether this is the correct answer. The correct answer is true. Okay. Once again, I make it worth one point. Add another test question. And now we'll do, let's do a multiple choice, and then we'll kind of stop it there. Okay. And this is where I like this one uh, a lot. Uh, I'm going to tell it answer A is going to be the correct answer in this one. And I'm going to give it choices. And I can give it a lot of choices up to E. And if I click here, I can even give more options and go all the way up to I, J, I'm sorry, letter J. So I have a lot of options I can give them. But we'll just stick with the three. Okay. Now what I can do at this point is I can tell it how many points it's worth. But above here, I can also set it so that it's going to present these answers in random order. That means two kids can be sitting right next to each other taking the same test. And they're actually going to get different, these questions, these choices will be in different order. And the questions themselves, I can set it later on so they're in different orders. So it makes it a lot harder for a kid to look on somebody else's test and cheat. All right, so I pretty much made up my questions. I'm done. Um, if I want to take a look, or I can, I can take a look at this. If I want to edit it later on, I can do that. That's no problem. So let's just take a look at this test right now. Okay. So if I start this test, it's got four little questions on it. 
and I can go through it and kids can find out how they did right at the end of the test. All right, and right there, so they will have to click on the finish button. And this is what they're going to get. The first thing it's going to tell them is that it's not completely corrected yet because your teacher has to grade it. So, But it shows them what they got, what they could have put. Right away, instant feedback for the kids. And this one, it says, hey, it's not graded yet. It needs to be graded. Okay. So that's how you create a test. Really simple. Um, and if you already have tests made up for something and you want to switch them order, over, you can do that. I've basically have taken my test documents and cut and paste them in and it saved me a lot of time. What's really nice about this, if I look at my tests here, is what I can do, and these are all the tests I have put into here already, is I can take a test and then I can share it with other teachers. So if I have other people in my department who use these same exams, one of us can basically create one test, another person can create a test for the next unit, and then we can share that test with each other. So I've created tests with my that I wanted to. I created tests for my classes, and then what I did is I I basically shared them. So you can see I, I have it on share right now. That's why it says you know do you want to not share this anymore? But we'll let my department benefit from my work. So all right, all right. Now what we want to show you next is how do you assign this test to a class? Okay, we basically created a test. Now we need to assign it to a class. So let me go down to my uh, the test I just made, my example test. And I basically click on it, and then I want to assign the test, okay? So I basically assign it. Now, which class I want to assign it to, I might as well assign it to my example class. And here's my list of all my tests, and none of them are assigned to that class right now. But if I want to, I can click on this and choose test setting. I'll set the, the, the I'll set the settings for the test and then assign it to the class. And it starts to go through. Now I've read through these and I know what they say. But usually, once you set it, you pretty much use the same setting for each one. So right here, it basically asks you want the uh, what do you want them to see after they're done. And right now, I want them to see their score and their chosen answer and the correct answers. If I don't want them to see that, maybe just their score. I can do that. That way, I can have them come in on Wednesday and make uh, corrections. Uh, or maybe nothing when they get done. No feedback. Uh, do I want the questions to be given in a random order? I like this one. I like to keep it on because now kids sitting right next to each other have different questions even though they might be taking the test at the same speed. How many questions per page? I like to have it one at a time. So the kid focuses on the question and then clicks to the next one. Um, can they do a practice of it? Uh, I'm going to say no to this one. They can't practice it and come back and try it again. But, you know, it, it might... Be a, a good idea for certain types of tests. Do I want them to email me the results? I don't because they'll basically. I'll show you what it looks like when they, uh, the the students are done. You can see all of their grades. Do I want to put a time limit on it? Do I want to let them be able to save it and finish later? I always t leave this on because you never know what you know a fire drill or uh, a kid might run out of time in class, and I want them to be able to come back and finish the exam. Show feedback and corrections during the test. This is basically, do you want it to pop up right away that as soon as the kid clicks next, they got the question wrong? Uh, I don't like that idea. I think it would kind of freak them out. Can they go back? Yeah, I want them to do that. Do I want them to have to select an answer? Yes. I don't want them to turn in an unanswered uh, test with an unanswered question. Um, do they have to answer correctly to continue? No, that's not what I want here. And what's the passing mark? And it's 65%. Um, and then this is automatically generically in. You have passed. If they fail, it will say, sorry, you did not pass. But you can make it say whatever you would like. Give them instructions before they start the test. Yeah, we'll leave that on even though they won't read it. And then I'm going to make this, sign this test now. And that's it. And now that, that my example class I created is now ready to take that example test. So if you look at it, the ones with the stars are the ones that this class basically can now look at. And if I don't want it to be assigned, I just click on this and it unassigns it. Just that easy.